Hi guys, I'm here with Lara Dejani, a lawyer from Dubai. So Lara spent with us three weeks. Yeah. And we'll have a little chat here before her taxi comes. Take her away. Back home. Yeah. So how was it for you, Lara? Why did you came here and uh, just express, you know, how, just describe how it was for you? Yeah, um, so I had a, a friend who came to Wachumawasi, uh, a good friend of mine, um, who I've been doing sort of Kriya Yoga with, it's a lot of work on breath and uh, energy alignment and healing. Um, and I think that sort of opened, that was the start of my, my sort of journey into spirituality and connecting with myself. And I felt that coming here, and, and I'd never tried plant medicine before, but I felt like that was a a natural extension of what I was already doing, but obviously amplified and, um, you know, she, she sort of put in a good word and um, I just came on a whim, not really knowing what to expect. Um, but yeah, after having spent three weeks here, I feel like I came, I, I'm, I'm not the same person that walked in three weeks ago, that's for sure. So what do you think changed? Where do I start? Uh, a lot of things, I think. Um, probably the most profound change for me was um, renewed my sense of faith and expanded my consciousness. I think that I was, I, I didn't, I, I didn't really realize, but I think I was very limited and sort of lived life in a box that we I used to think was very, very limited. Um, and these are all limitations imposed on you by society and where you grow up and, and, and yourself and your upbringing and, you know, I, I was blessed, I had a very good upbringing, but I think um, there was a lot that was suppressed and I think I'd always felt there was something, deep down I felt there was something wrong or something missing. I didn't know what I was searching for, but I've been searching for a year and a half since getting divorced. and. I, I feel like I found it. I found my soul. Um, you know, it's given new meaning to life, to the world, to what I'm doing. Um, it's, it's been life changing. So, what was your intention to come here in terms of healing? Do you have any specific, specific things you wanted to work on? Yeah, I mean, uh, so so I got divorced a year and a half ago. So, a big part was sort of dealing with anger. Uh, resentment, pain, grief. Um, that was, I, I, th I thought that was why I was coming here. Uh, I've also had sort of chronic pain. Uh, my neck, shoulders and back, my spine has always been very stiff and sort of the facet joints. And no one has been able to help me. I've been to, you know, uh, I f felt some ease through phys you know, physiotherapy, you know, going to saunas, massages. I've been doing that for five years. Um, but I, I got the sense that it wasn't just physical, actually. I think once once you've, I sort of reached the limit of how much physical therapy can help. Um, and then I saw a psychologist for a year and a half. And again, I felt that I reached the limit of how much you can heal through talking. Um, and I came to the right, right place. I had a calling here. Um, and it's it's been the best decision that I've taken because I'm, I'm completely a new person. My body feels different. I'm connected to myself and other people and nature and the divine. Um, I thought I was coming here for a specific purpose, but the medicine showed me that that's not why I was here. I was here for much bigger things that I think I wasn't able to comprehend coming in. Yeah, it often happens like that. You, you know, you come here for one thing and then you leave with the whole bag of surprises, you know. Yeah, yeah I think as, as, as long as you have the openness, the trust, the trust in you, the trust in this place, the trust in the medicine, and the trust in yourself, then you will be very surprised. That, but you, you have to, first and foremost, you have to trust uh, and open your heart. And, um, and let the medicine take you and show you. Yeah. 
Did you have trouble with trust in the beginning? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, firstly, I, I'd never done plant medicine before. I'm not a drug taker. I, we're not I, taking I, drugs. Well, not, we're not talking drugs, but... but in general. It, it, yeah, I'm talking generally speaking, it was very f foreign. I think that's probably yeah. a better way to put it. It was very foreign to me. And I had sort of a perception of, of what, you know, what Chuma, ayahuasca, and, and the types of people. I was very limited. You know, the types of people who, you know, drink plant medicine. You know, I'm, I'm a very ordinary sort of, well, I'm not, not ordinary, but I, it took me by surprise. A lawyer from Dubai. Yeah, I'm Got a normal person. <laughs> you know, I'm not a hippie that, you know. Uh. It, it really surprised me. It really surprised me. But uh, yeah, it's been amazing. Well, you know, this is an important point, you know. I'm not against hippies, you know, I respect all ways of life. But this is a miscon misconception. But this work is for dreadlock dudes. Exactly. Or girls, you know, it's just not that it's just not true. I mean, they're also doing that, anyone can do it. Yeah. But it's not for people who have a certain lifestyle or believe in certain things or you yeah. know, uh, represent a counter culture or something it's like it's for everyone yeah it's anyone any, every healthy reasonably healthy mentally healthy person can do this yeah. you know that's just a misconception that's people think oh i you know i'm far from this i'm not taking any substances and it's like i'm already too old for that it's like no none of this is true yeah you know and you you just have experienced that yeah. coming from a very rigid culture environment it's like you are that you're probably the best person to represent that yeah. because of where you're coming from and the background and personal history you know and here you are having what you and finding God basically yeah you know yeah, I think the other misconception is that you have to come with like a huge amount of issues and I think that's probably also not mm. correct because I think the medicine the beauty of the medicine at least sort of how I experienced it is yes you have to work through you know fears and you know everybody suffers from fear in different ways you know maybe anxiousness it's, it's new it's um, but but actually the the I think people think that they need to come here with you know sick you know massive being personal being sick basically but what I've learned myself is that you don't have to come here sick. You can come here as a healthy person, yeah. simply wanting to understand more, yeah. um, seeking a connection yeah. with the divine, uh, wanting to connect with yourself or with nature. Or, you know, I've yeah. I've had like every ceremony for me has been just unbelievable, like beyond what I was able to to comprehend. I think. Um, that's true. That's just not a misconception. You know, I never came to the medicine out of sickness. I was healthy 100%, yeah. physically, mentally, <coughs> always. I was sick. For me, it was just purely spiritual quest. Yeah. For me, it was um, to understand myself, to understand my relation with the world, you know, yeah. find meaning, truth, you yeah. know. So I found what I was looking for and actually a lot more, you know. But you're absolutely right. It's, you don't have to be sick and you don't have to be hippie. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, I mean, you can be. You can be both. But it's not, that's but not, that's, that's again a limitation that people put. It's not a necessity. It's, it's not like, a, You know, you can come totally fine, you know, just looking mm -hmm. for answers. Yeah. yeah exactly. So, I actually prefer that kind of people, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I welcome everybody. And if people need help, we help, you know, but it's a different work and it's, um, uh, it, it's more vibrant to work with a person who isn't depressed or suicidal or sick, you know, who is already in a normal level and you go straight to spiritual realm, yeah. straight to the consciousness, you know, yeah. you don't have to deal with things to bring the person to the normal so you can go farther you know so it's a different work you know there's place for both yeah. and uh, the, the healing is where it starts you know yeah. it's not where the journey ends 
you have to be healthy to reach divine realm. You can't be just all depressed and scared and anxious and here you just find heaven. It doesn't work with that, yeah. in my experience. You have to you have to bring yourself to the normal level, to the healthy, stable level. From there you can start reaching higher, you know? So healing happens for everyone in different way, but that's where it starts. And then pretty quick we go in a positive plan. Yeah, you know. Sure. Yeah, I mean, and I, I, in your case, how was it? Yes, yeah, so I was just going to say, I, I mean, I came fearful and anxious and childhood trauma and divorce and anger and fear of, like, random irrelevant things, like <laughs> fear of spiders, <laughs> fear of dogs. Like, when I walked into your house and saw your dog, I was paralyzed. But from ceremony one, I don't know, the fear got dropped. Um, I mean, you, you worked through it, but medicine gives you perspective um, even with minor fears that maybe you don't think is it's annoying it's an inconvenience it's always been an inconvenience in my life but um, it's given me a lot of perspective about what's important and what isn't um, to, to appreciate small things uh, to appreciate love to appreciate connection um, and so everything else becomes irrelevant um, you know it wasn't a conscious choice to drop the fear it just the medicine helped me you know, to work yeah. through it, to understand it. To go that. through it, to understand it, to work through all, like you were saying, yes. you work through the, the personal issues, which everybody has in differing degrees, but once you're able to overcome that, uh, different people will take different amounts of time to overcome their own personal difficulties. That's when you really see the, the prize jewels. Um, and that's what I think everybody should be striving for. Yeah, it's freedom. Yeah. That's what it is. Freedom from fear. Yeah. That's happiness. You are, you are not crippled by that. Just living your life. Yeah. Doing whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. You know? So that's what, the, that's what the ultimate healing is, you know? Of course, there's many departments to it, many aspects. Yeah. But if you're not free from fear, then what, are you, then what is freedom there? Yeah. You know? And this is what we focus on. So, would you like to share what was your most profound ceremony? It's hard to choose. I mean, there's three that come to mind. Probably yeah. the the last yesterday ceremony was. Yeah, I mean, it would have to be yesterday ceremony. The last one, yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, it gave me a lot of clarity. I don't know, somehow I, I connected all the dots about the last three weeks. It like solidified my whole experience. Um, it gave me a lot of strength. Um, I realized, you know, kind of, I, I could see myself as I am without all the stuff that gets piled on through life and, you know, the fears and the, you know, the, the issues and the kind of suppression and social pressures but I saw myself as I am uh, I connected to my core self and I, I felt that somehow and it, it had been happening gradually but yesterday was like I I, I, I see myself now as, as I am my core essence <coughs> my spiritual self as well connection with my soul um it was intense. I mean, I, 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 th I think the, the place that we went to specifically was um, emits a lot. It's, it's a very strong and energetic place. And I could feel the power and significance of where we were and connected to it uh, in an unbelievable way. Um, everything from the start you know, from the, where we sat first and then when we moved to the rock and the, the sacred site, I was, I was moved and just, I, I was overwhelmed actually. I was overwhelmed, not in a bad way, in, in a very good way. Um, and, <clears throat> and very humbled as well. Because I think once you see what I saw, I, you know, I, I literally was brought to my knees. I just was blown away and you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to be the same person. 
that, that I was before. It's an enhanced, enlightened, um, more educated, more expanded person. That's powerful. That's uh, the kind of experience that makes a difference in your life. You know? So, were you scared in the beginning? You know? <laughs> Super scared. <clears throat> I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect. Um, but I think ever, anything new is scary. And you have misconceptions and preconceived ideas, you know, about, like I said, the type of people who, you know, and, and what you're going to, you know, and I, I came with a baggage of fear. I was just like, <laughs> I feel like I came as a mess, you know? Pretty much. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but I feel like I, I, I came very fearful. <clears throat> Didn't know what to expect. But I think what got me through it was um, just a very, a very strong... really say a sense of self but um, purity and openness and, and, and trust and it gets cultivated over time I think it's some people may feed it from day one I didn't I, 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 I had to convince myself and I like your approach because you're you're very gentle uh, in the way that you tailor the medicine to the person who's in front of you you get to know the person and, you know their history and um, I felt that you were, and, and as you are with everyone actually, but very gentle and that approach worked perfectly for me. Um, so I didn't get overwhelmed. I at times was thrown in the deep end, but it always paid off. Um, but yeah, I, I, the fear left me quit very quickly, you know, when I started to understand, when, once you had your first ceremony. So when you, <clears throat> when you start to understand how the medicine works, I think you then start trusting in the medicine, you become more comfortable, uh, you know, and, and you can slowly start taking a little bit more if you're comfortable to do so. Um, and you start seeing how you react. Um, it's, it's a beautiful process. And I think, I, I personally had always been very skeptical. Um, and I think, I mean, the most important thing is, is is to trust where you are and be sure who you're working with. Um, because I think that's a fundamental mistake. You know, not all shamans, not all people are trustworthy, you know? And I, I mean, I can personally vouch for you because I've been here and for your medicine. I think it's, it's, it's pure, you don't mix it with anything. Um, you are also pure and, and I felt it when I came here and that helped me trust. Um, so I think this is the right place to be, um, you know, to experience uh, our tumor. Wonderful. So what would you like to say to people who, who will watch this video, who would feel the calling to come, but will be scared? What would you tell them? I mean, yeah, I was that person too. <laughs> um, so I, I can understand the fear um, and the hesitation, but if you are going to go somewhere, here is the place to be. Um, and and you're in control as well. It's not, you don't come here and you suddenly start dosing people with, you know, it's not, you work with people and you, it's, it's, a, it's a discussion and it's how comfortable are you. It's a very safe place. Um, it's a very welcoming place. Um, you know, we're literally living with you. We become a family, you know, with your wife and your kids. Um, and uh, just, I think, trust. Trust. If you have a calling here, you should trust why you feel that you're being called here. You know, coming across you, your videos, your books. Um, you know, trust that the world is bringing you here for a reason. Um, you know, and there's always an exit if someone... <laughs> You know, but it's never the door happened. Is there. I mean, it's it's never happened. Out. But you know, you're not. <laughs> but usually, stuck. people want to stay longer. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I teared off this morning thinking that it's my last day. I'm very sad to leave, but there's a lot of work to be done. I think, yeah. Back home. Um, but yeah, most people extend their trips here and 
never want to leave your home. Yes, like so I think that's... Living here together. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think the, the biggest telling, actually, I, I said this to one of the other people here, but I think the biggest sign of, 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 of your success and, and your trust is the fact that you have repeated clients that come. Yeah, people come back, bring their families. People come back. Mother, father, children, you exactly. know, sisters, brothers, yeah. you know, that's, that happens a lot, yeah? yeah? People come with families, actually. Yeah. I had a few of them. Yeah, know, I, I mean, I so saw beautiful. it. I saw it while I was here. So that, to me, is enough. That's amazing, you know. That's one thing I wish would be different in my life, that I would be able to share this medicine with my parents. Yeah. But that, that wasn't possible. Yeah. They were living in Israel, and... I just couldn't bring it here. And I, it just was not physically possible, you know? There was yeah. problems there. And they died without ever seeing the medicine. And that's very sad. You know, that's something I cannot fix. I want to encourage people to do that because it's amazing to drink. I see that a lot of people who do it together with their children. It, it creates such a deep bond between parents and children. And you can discuss you can you can talk about everything and just bring people closer, you know. So that's very beautiful. So, so did you say already to people something if they're afraid? Did we talk about it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we did. Huh? So, what else would you like to add? Um, I mean, I think the the. From, from what I'm seeing, although I haven't been home yet, but I think what's amazing is that the healing is not just for yourself. Um, you know, I think you, you, you experience the healing here, but I've already started to see the impact that I'm having on other people. Um, I've had people comment, you know, things like, when I speak to you, I see your light and how, how light you are, that it makes me feel heavy. So I think What's amazing is that the impact is also beyond yourself, and I think we can all heal each other. Um, it's it's an amazing place. I really can't I can't I can't emphasize it enough. And I would encourage people to you know to not be afraid and to come and experience because it's it's life changing. It's eye opening. Um, and I have not seen anyone or heard of anyone who's come here and regretted it. You know, whatever the issues are, or no issues, or just coming to explore, um, everybody leaves wanting to stay, and everybody leaves a better, more expanded, more healed person. Yeah, that's true. Well, did you know that you are the first Palestinian client in Cactus House? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> Am I the first Arab? Or First. First Palestinian. Uh, first Palestinian. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure about if it's first. I had Muslim people who okay. practice Islam. Islam. Yeah. But I'm not sure if they are Arabs. It's like I'm not sure how that works together. You know what I mean? You not all Muslims. Not are necessary. Arabs. Yeah. Exactly. You can just have the faith, but not being Arab. Correct. So I didn't have people from Palestine. That's for sure. Mm. I only a few, few people who were Muslims, but they, they were living in America, they were not really, mm. you know. So, in your case, you're the first Palestinian. You were born there, right? No, I was actually born in London. Ah, but your uh, parents? But I'm originally, yeah, my parents were, were um, they lived in Palestine, in so Jerusalem. They, they left <coughs> there, okay. Yeah, so they left. That, and so you can say that you're Palestinian. I'm, yeah, yeah. both my that. parents are Palestinian, okay. so I'm just uh, born in England. Okay, so, well, then you're first Arab. Wow, I'm honored From to be paving the way. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And that's very, it's, it's great, you know, I'm very happy that it happened like that. And you definitely, you know, you have an in, you had an impact on my perception of Palestinian people. And, uh, you know, coming from Israel, it's, uh, it's a different... Uh, perspective there yeah. so you know we see you as enemies and and as you see us as, as enemies you know and that's very unfortunate but that's how brainwashing works mm -hmm. you know it's politics 
all this stuff. Yeah. So you got a voice now. My Palestinian people got a, uh, another voice here, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, this just shows that you know all this is just such a bullshit. You know, all this politics, all this, all this division. I mean, when you're really going into spiritual realm, you see a person in front of you as a person. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what his or uh, her skin color, nationality, and anything. It's mm -hmm. just such a dumb thing that it's just like, um, it's truly dumb, you know? Yeah. And it's such a real issue in the world. Yeah. It creates so much problem. Yeah. So it just shows that the medicine unites people and allows them to see inside yeah. beyond all uh, illusions you know yeah. and uh, divisions that politics creates to basically manipulate us against each other for their political and economic gain that's just how it is you yeah. know yeah so uh, I, I think the I think there is no stronger bond than a spiritual connection. I think yeah. that's also what I've realized. And like you said, it doesn't matter what gender, age, nothing. background, color, sight, nothing matters. Nothing matters. Spiritual connection is, is it, it's almost just beyond unbreakable. That. Yeah. Yeah, it's beyond that. Yeah. It's beyond that. That's probably one of the reasons why plant medicine is not uh, favored by the powers that be, because uh, it destroys the agenda. Mm -hmm. It destroys the manipulation, destroys the game, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, the bottom line that the peace between Israel and Palestine is possible, but it's not going to happen on a political, collective level. It's a, it's an individual thing. It's an awakening yeah. of the person, awakening of the heart. Yeah. You know. Yeah, for sure. Because there's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of hatred, um, Definitely. and I think we're <laughs> we're proof you're Israeli and I'm Palestinian. It's like we're yeah. supposed to be enemies, but yeah. But we've, I mean, you've helped me heal, and yeah, you know, course. like you said, in certain ways, I've helped you heal as well. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. Beautiful. Well, I think that's a good uh, place to end our talk and. If anything else you want to add, it's time now, and then if not, we'll wrap it up. You get packed, your taxi comes soon, and then you're on your way to Dubai. Back to the real world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready Put for Put things it. in practice. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So... No, I think, I think the... As much as I'm sad to leave and leave, my, effectively, my family, I think... Um, yeah, I think three weeks for me was good. Um, I would love to have stayed longer and do. I don't think there's ever a limited amount of time for healing. I think everybody <coughs> has more to heal and more to yeah. again expand your to unfold, yeah. to unfold and expand your consciousness. And the medicine has a lot of depth to it that I would love to continue exploring. Um, but I think, <laughs> given the three weeks I've had and the ceremonies, I think there's a lot to process, a lot to think about. You know, integrate, see yeah. how I do and. Maybe come back. Yeah, mm. come back for sure for more. Yeah. For going deeper. Right Wonderful. Okay, Laura. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks. For your talk, for your time, for your beautiful presence and heart. Thank you.